So today's video is a bit different. I originally had three more Unreal Blueprint tutorials lined up, but since we got a random influx of Unity game developers on board in the last video, I figured today we'd talk about something more fun, applicable, and fundamental to any developer looking to make a successful game, which is your target audience. All the best graphics, story, music, and programming in the world aren't really gonna help you if you don't know exactly who your game is for. And feel free to completely disagree with me in the comments below if you think differently. But the reason I think this is relevant is because I believe that in today's age, a significant portion of people can no longer tell the difference between a bad game and a game that's not for them. It's like, for example, I'm a big fan of Godzilla, and I'm a big fan of King Kong. So when they had a movie of the two together, I thought it was fun, and I had a good time, and it was just a cool movie about a giant lizard fighting a giant gorilla, which was exactly what I wanted. So I had a pretty good review of the movie. Other people who had negative reviews basically said they didn't like it because it was just a movie about a giant lizard fighting a giant gorilla. And I think this is the review dynamic for a lot of things right now. The reason I liked Godzilla vs. Kong is the exact same reason that other people did not like the movie. And there's a lot less nuance between not liking something and calling it bad now. And if you're a developer making a game, or even playing a game, I think it's very important for you to be able to make the distinction to better help you navigate honestly when a game is truly good, bad, or if it's just not for you. And to do this, I think you have to be honest with yourself and what your tendencies are. For example, I much prefer games where your real-time technical skill is your level. Where if you use the right technique at the right time in the right place, in the proper order with the right knowledge, then the game will allow you to beat the entire campaign with a level 1 character if you're good enough. This is why I tend to lean towards fighting and shooter games. Because there's no arbitrary level wall stopping you from going to grand finals and defeating the best player in the world. Like there is nothing stopping you from entering the next EVO and beating Sonic Fox except for your own skill. There's no arbitrary rule that says you don't have the right to face a professional player in a tournament unless you have grinded 300 hours and are level 20 before you sign up. If you have the skills to beat everyone, you will beat everyone. And I like games where this is the case. That being said, this is also the reason I do not gravitate towards games that require grinding for experience until I reach a certain level. In high school, a really good friend of mine tried to introduce me to Final Fantasy. And very early in the game, I encountered battles where, no matter what I tried, no matter how I strategized, I just wouldn't be able to beat certain enemies or bosses. And at first I thought, maybe there's a technique, or a button combination, or a combo that I just don't know about, or maybe I'm not timing something correctly, or maybe I'm just timing something on the wrong turn. And after trying everything I could think of, I asked my friend, hey, how do you get past this boss? And when he told me, oh yeah, just spend three days grinding on the starter enemies until you're level 15, and then you'll be able to beat the boss no problem. And for me, that's when I realized this game just isn't for me. That's simply not how I have fun. Because when I win, it's not because I outplayed the enemy, it's because I'm level 15. And that's not how I want to win my battles. Now all that being said, just because I don't enjoy the grinding experience to level up and beat my enemies, I would never call Final Fantasy a bad game. I personally don't enjoy it, but I would never leave it a 1 or a 2 star review because I know that's just patently untrue. Because it's very clear that the people who enjoy this kind of gameplay really like the game. And so for today's video, I have a question for you. And that is, what do you personally use to judge how good a game is? What criteria do you personally believe are required for you to say a game is good? Even if you're not a game developer, if you were, how would you decide the success of your game? I believe this is a question that every dev should ask themselves very early into the project. Would you rather most people like it, or would you rather some people love it? If the game is a hit with the target audience, but it's a massive flop with the average audience, is that better or worse than if the game is a success with the average audience, but your target audience thinks it's too easy and boring? Or would you rather have no highs and no lows, and both the target and the average audience just think the game is okay? Obviously, we always aim for the best case scenario where everyone loves your game, but 
realistically, that's not always possible. So let's put that aside for now. And let's just assume you had to pick one of the three scenarios because you know you don't have enough resources to make a five-star game that everybody loves, that has the best story, the best gameplay, the best graphics. You don't have the ability to make all that. So you have to scale down and do one of the three following. Now I'll give you my answer first. I would personally consider my game a success if just the target audience loves it, even if the average audience does not. And I'll explain why and explore this answer in the next video. But before before we get there, since we have so many new game developers here on the channel, I'm just really curious how you guys would answer this question first. So leave a comment down below. I'm going to be spending tomorrow reading through them, and we will continue this discussion in the next video. As always, hope you have a fantastic day, and I'll see you around.